Mau satu lagi ya Pak, sama saya juga mau satu. Hmm. Is it too spicy for you? No. No. It's fantastic. You like spicy? Yeah, spicy. Remember what AI is doing is democratizing the access to knowledge. <laughs> if you're not feeling well, if you're feeling sick, you can just tell tell the AI. Of course, some of the ideas might not be that very useful, but the interaction of the AI might inspire you to come up with a new idea. <laughs> so For the small vendors like Could I have some of the napkins? Oh napkins. Wow. It's, it's getting hot. Yeah, it's very <laughs> spicy. Yeah. I think it's because yeah, of the my spicy. Stuff, yeah. Don't think that AI will become superhuman. Use AI so that you become superhuman. Somebody who is super, super smart working with you. Oh. That's the great power of AI. Which also can be scary, right? <laughs>Teknologi saling berkejaran, dan tiap terobosan punya tokoh yang dirayakan. Sekarang era Artificial Intelligence, eranya Jensen Huang. Pendiri sekaligus CEO Nvidia ini salah satu sosok paling berpengaruh di dunia saat ini. Terutama jika kita bicara tentang kecerdasan buatan atau biasa disebut AI. Jensen mendirikan Nvidia pada 1993. Ini perusahaan yang awalnya sukses berkat mempelopori produksi grafik processing unit, sejenis chip untuk memproses data grafis dan komputasi paralel yang banyak digunakan untuk kebutuhan game dan multimedia. Tapi pamor Nvidia semakin menjadi-jadi sejak inovasinya berhasil memaksimalkan pengembangan machine learning dan pemrosesan big data pada AI. Hari ini, nyaris semua perusahaan dan platform yang mengembangkan AI bergantung pada Nvidia. Sebut saja ChatGPT, Meta, Alphabet, dan Microsoft. Chipmaker Nvidia set the record for the largest one-day increase in market value in stock market history. Dominasi pasar AI yang dilakukan Nvidia akhirnya mendorong saham mereka ke rekor tertinggi. Per 13 November 2024, kapitalisasi pasar Nvidia mencapai 3,59 triliun dolar Amerika Serikat, mengukuhkan Nvidia sebagai perusahaan paling berharga di dunia saat ini. Capaian ini otomatis mengantarkan Jensen menjadi salah satu orang terkaya di dunia. CEO Meta, Mark Zuckerberg, bahkan menjulukinya Taylor Swift of Tech. Kamis 14 November, Jensen berkunjung ke Indonesia. Ia hadir sebagai pembicara di acara AI Day yang digelar Indosat di Jakarta. Sorenya, kami berjumpa di salah satu lapak kuliner gulai tikungan di kawasan Blok M, Jakarta Selatan. Sosok kelahiran Taiwan ini memang dikenal doyan makan street food. Ditemani juga Presiden Direktur dan CEO Indosat, Vikram Sinha. Kami menyatap nasi gulai sambil berbincang soal tren perkembangan AI. Saya ingin dengar lebih banyak untuk lebih mengerti satu kegelisahan besar manusia hari ini. Bagaimana sebaiknya AI dipahami dan ditanggapi. Hai. Hi Jensen, I'm Najwa. I'm such a big fan. It was such an so honor much. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. I think I'm going to leave my jacket in here. It's better. It's okay. Better. Yeah, Hi. Thank you. Hi. I've been watching you, watching all your interviews, thank reading you. all your books. Thank I'm you so much. Thank you. I'm such a big fan. Oh my God. So this is your so, first time in Jakarta? Yeah. Yes. How do you find it so far? Well, The people, the spirit, uh-huh. the energy, uh-huh. that's fantastic. Do you always try to find local food when you're here? Yeah, I, well, teach me the local food. Okay, so this is actually my hood. Uh-huh. This, this is, is your hood? This is my hood. Uh-huh. That's where I went to school. Is that right? Yep, that's my high school there. And this yeah. is the place where we used to hang out because the food is good and cheap and delicious. We so call, teach me. I, it smells fantastic. We call this Vikram. So we call this uh, street corner stew. So it's actually curry or stew, but because they sell it by the street corner, so it's street corner stew. Gul tik, gulai tikungan. So this is where the youngsters are like. Now what? What is the famous food in uh, Indonesia? Well, plenty of them. Yeah. But um. One of the famous is rendang and also satay and this is also nice. So 
You want to try this? Have you tried this, Vikram? No, I've tried it, but Jensen likes street food. Okay. Have you tried this? Yes, this is my staple. So, okay. Pak, mau beli satu ya, Pak? Okay, let's try this. So, this is... Okay, Pak, mau satu, gultiknya. You want it with rice? You want it with rice also, Vikram? This is your curry. Okay. So, this is basically curry. Okay with tender beef slices, with coconut milk, spiced coconut milk broth. <laughs> and then you pour it over the rice. And this is the crackers. And these are the condiments. Okay. So you can actually have like meatballs and... Meatballs sounds good. Meatballs, yes. No, satu meatballs, yeah, masa good. Yeah, satu meatballs. And these are chicken nuggets. Would you like some? Sure. Yeah. Oh, this is actually chicken skins. Okay. Chicken skins, yeah, by this. Pull it, yeah? Pull it, okay. okay. Let me just take one for yeah, you, yeah? Sure. Okay. And do you eat intestines? No. Okay, okay. How about um, nuggets? Oh, this is meatball nuggets. Okay. Yeah, I think that's plain. That's good? Okay. Yeah. This is... Thank you. Thank you. Pa Vikram, uh, I think you should have one also, Pak. Mau satu lagi ya, Pak? Sama saya juga mau satu. Mmm. <laughs> like it? Mm. Is it too spicy for you? No. No? It's fantastic. You like spicy? Like, yeah, spicy. We can also actually uh, add some soy sauce and some um, chili sauce if you want. Awesome chili sauce. Yeah. Oh. It's pretty spicy. Yeah, I think that's a bit too much. I don't know if you, I don't know your, like, if you like it really spicy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For you, Papi Gram. And let's sit down there. Okay. No. Sit yeah. here, Jensen. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah. You're not having? You gotta having have one. Yeah, of course I'm having. This is my... Bring back so many memories. Questions about yeah. AI and yeah. um, street food. Yeah. Because I remember you often said that uh, business should go AI first. But if we're talking about small businesses with limited resources like these street vendors, yeah. what would you suggest that they do that they would go first in terms of using AI? Well, of course, they don't have to build AI. The country needs to build AI, and some internet companies will have to build AI. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that they, everyone will um, learn is that AI is a great teacher because you can ask it anything you want. And so uh, if you want to learn, learn something about a new recipe, if you want to learn, uh, you know, well, I don't know what they would love to learn, but if they would love to learn something, you just have to ask. And everybody, very few people in the world knows how to program a computer but everybody knows how to ask a question. Mm. So what would you expect like the most, the, the, the biggest changes or improvements that they would get if they're starting to use AI in their daily uh, lives, in their I daily believe, work? Remember what AI is doing, is democratizing the access to knowledge. Mm. And it's also reducing um, the access to intelligence. Mm. Problem solving, intelligence is problem solving. And so everybody here in the future, if you have a phone and everybody has a phone, everybody has access to internet access, there will be an AI that you can talk to. You can ask it about anything. And so the, inf the access to information, the access to knowledge has really reduced. Now, of course, many people will say that the internet is access to knowledge, but internet is really access to information. You still have to go find it. Yeah. And just finding information is hard. But having somebody who is a tutor that you can talk to, an actual person, it's almost like an actual person mm -hmm. that is infinitely knowledgeable. You can ask them, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're not feeling well, if you're feeling sick, you can just tell tell the AI. Mm -hmm. Um tell them what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And the AI would do its best to try to help you. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe your your um, uh, business is not doing very well. You could say, my business is not doing very well. What ideas do you have? Mm. And the AI will try to give you some ideas. Mm. 
of course, some of the ideas might not be that very useful, but the interaction of the AI might inspire you to come up with a new idea. So, for the small vendors like could I have some of the napkins? Sure. Oh, napkins! Wow, it's, go ahead. It's getting hot. Yeah, it's very spicy. <laughs> yeah. I think it's because yeah, of the my spicy. Sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Some water. Maybe? Wow! No, no. What do you think would be the biggest challenges for small vendors, like these street food vendors, for them in actually using AI? Well, the thing is, is um. Remember, AI is easy to use. Mm. Computers are not easy to use, but intelligence is easy to use. You know, we're intelligent people. We can interact with them. In the future, they'll just be an AI that they can interact with, and this AI will know many things, have a conversation with you, and so I, I think the until until they access the AI and use the AI and ask it all kinds of questions, it's really hard to know. Um, what is going to be an obstacle, mm. and so, so I think the the most important idea about artificial intelligence is that we're democratizing the technology. We're reducing the the technology divide. Now anybody can have access to technology. Nvidia is working with every AI company in the world right now. What are some of the most exciting AI projects that we've seen recently? It spans enormous range. I love the use of AI to accelerate science mm. and scientific discovery, understanding climate change, looking for ways to discover reservoirs to capture carbon yeah. and store carbon, um, new materials that are lighter, more effective, new. Ways to discover drugs, so that so that um, the amount of experimentation is reduced. There's just you know in every field of science, there's some uses. of the developments that can really change Imagine people's just lives. Somebody who is super super smart working with you. Oh. That's you know that's the that's the great power of AI, the having colleagues and having having companions that are super smart, mm. helping solve problems. Which also can be scary, right? Because there's a lot of, in your uh, perspective, what are some of the biggest misunderstanding about AI that makes people scared? All of the movie expressions of AI is not what it is. AI has great promise, and because it has incredible capability, it can be used uh, improperly. And so it's up to society, it's up to the companies that build AI, up to scientists that build the AI to build it responsibly. And so the industry is working hard to make AI functional, make AI safe. Um, but until people use it, you know, there's no sense being afraid of it. This is like the internet. In the beginning, when the internet came, a lot of people asked, "What's it for? Can I afford it? What do I use it for?" And now everybody uses the internet. So in the future, artificial intelligence or intelligence will simply be a new layer above the internet. Today we use the internet to communicate. Tomorrow we use the internet to solve problems. We use the internet as a companion. You use the internet for a, you know, an intelligent companion. So there's no reason at all to be afraid. There's a lot of reasons to be afraid, um, but you know, there's a lot of reasons to be afraid to cross the street. But it doesn't mean you don't cross the street. So we ought to be cautious. That we ought to be bold. We ought to, you know, help help the world have this access to this technology, because for the very first time, we can close the technology divide. Very few people in the world knows how to program a computer. That's called computer science. But everybody in the world knows how to use an AI. It's like interacting with each other. Yeah. So why deprive them the opportunity to access this great? Technology force that can close the technology divide for the very first time. So I think we ought to be we ought to be bold, we ought to be optimistic, but we should be cautious. Uh, on to that point, Jensen. Um, I remember watching one of your talk. I think it was at the World Government Summit, where uh, you said something. Well, I'm paraphrasing here when you said that AI is so advanced that teaching coding and computer science. It's not as crucial as it used to be. 
So what are some of the core competencies that you think our kids should have in this AI era? What I meant, what I said was, most people won't need to code. Coding will not be necessary. Now, of course, for most people, we still need a lot of computer scientists and we still need to code. But for the vast majority of the people, learning how to code is, is pointless. You have to learn how to program, how to interact with an AI, how to communicate with someone so that they can help you do something. As you know, communicating with someone, asking questions requires some skill. Of course. That's right. And so in the future, if you need AI to help you, you have to learn how to ask questions. You need to learn how to prompt. It's called prompting an AI. How to, how to, how to convince an AI to do for you what you're asking it to do, what you intend. And so the future is not about everybody learning how to program computers, but it's about everybody learning how to use AI. Mm -hmm. It's just know, know how to ask mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. And what are those core competencies? What should we be focusing on if we're talking about All of education? the basic skills, all of the basic skills um, in, in education are still essential. Math, science, reasoning, logic, philosophy, history, all of that is still fundamentally essential. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the foundations to learn, to know how to interact with artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Just asking, Oftentimes, you have to have some back, background information to even know what to ask. So, none of that changes. But you don't have to learn how to program a computer. You still need to learn science. You need to learn science. You need to learn math. You need to learn reasoning. But learning how to program a computer is terrific. But it's unnecessary. I also feel that letting people somehow um, communicating to the world that in order to be successful, you have to learn how to program a computer. That's wrong. You, there are many ways to be successful without learning how to, without knowing how to program a computer. And for the very first time, it's not even necessary because, because I, the I computer, that that's lot. right. And so I think it inspires people, it lifts people to realize that the obstacles to their success has been removed. Hmm. Instead of keep raising the bar, on society to let them know that you need you need to know physics, you need to know calculus, you need to, you need C plus plus. That level of capability most society can't reach. I think it discourages people from wanting to be successful. We should lower the expectations, lower the the barrier for their success. And now you have AI to be your partner. AI is going to make everybody superhuman. That's the idea. Just that it's the same idea as. 300 years ago, if you would have said to somebody, you could, you can run 10 times faster than a horse. Well, Nobody would believe that. Yeah. But yet everybody does. Everybody does today. I don't know one person who can't run 10 times faster than a horse. Mm -hmm. Just get on a car. <laughs> and so it's completely superhuman yeah. to be able to do it. In the future, it is no, it's not going to be any more magical than that. You're going to have a computer that helps you become superhuman. You should take advantage of that computer to become superhuman. Lift yourself, lift yourself, lift your society, lift your village, lift your community, lift your country, become superhuman. Wow. Can I ask you something personal? Yeah. What drives you to have this push for innovation in AI? I love, I love watching success. I love watching other people succeed. I love watching Vikram succeed. <laughs> you have been supporting Sahaba Indonesia and the Indosat ecosystem, what I learned from Jensen is mission is the boss. And I asked this question, how Indonesia can leapfrog? He said, if you want to take mission is the boss, cut the red tape. Mission, everyone works for the mission. Second, I'm not wearing wash today because I'm at this moment. I want to get better <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> every day. This is, this is actually to, you know, to count my steps. So, so, so I'm know, using this to count my steps. But not everybody because has I don't to live keep reminding me. I have to go because for me, right now is the most important yes. time. I think that's a big learning, Nagra. You know, live at the yeah. moment. Do your best. Keep getting better. Beat yesterday. So yeah. Thank you, Jensen, what you have taught all of us. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You can do it. Today is a very big day for Indonesia. Today is the first day of Indonesia AI. Oh. And you need to know that Sahabat was built in Indonesia by Indonesians. This country built its AI. Wow. 
with its language, with its culture. And now you have the operating system for the future industry. You have joined the world's leaders in being an AI industry, being an AI country. And you did it right here in Indonesia. You can do it. Very proud of you. What a big Thank day. You. Maybe Thank just you. one last question. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would be your um, advice to the young professionals that want to make it in this, they're just starting out, want to make it in this uh, tech industry or whatever industry in this uh, era, Renaissance computing era, as you yeah. said? This is, this is a whole new global technology industry reset. Mm. And so you need to know that you are exactly where everybody else is now. Nobody is ahead of you. It is complete reset. So that's the first thing. The second thing is use AI to become superhuman. Don't think that AI will become superhuman. Use AI so that you become superhuman. And so learn to engage AI. Of course, everything that you love to learn and all the things that you do in school are still very important. But no matter what you do, learn AI. No matter what you use, no matter what you do, use AI. That's the most important thing. Absolutely engage it, absolutely use it to become superhuman. I believe in you, okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you, Thank you Johnson. Thank you. Kecerdasan buatan, kemana akan membawa kita? AI masih menyisakan banyak pertanyaan, juga kecemasan. Mengingatkan saya pada filosofi kisah Frankenstein tentang manusia yang gagal mengendalikan ciptaannya sendiri. Saat mesin semakin pandai, apakah kita manusianya semakin bijaksana atau malah tak berdaya? Manusia gelisah akan kemajuan zaman, namun itu tanda bahwa kita masih berpikir, masih punya nurani, itu yang pertama-tama dibutuhkan. Jensen Huang, yang ikut menjadi penentu dalam laju kembang AI, masih percaya manusia yang pegang kendali. Apa yang bisa kita lakukan? Kenali, pelajari, lalu ambil peran. Memastikan AI tidak hanya mereplikasi ketidakadilan yang selama ini ada di masyarakat. Itu cara kita ambil kendali. Terima kasih, Mas Agus. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Pak. Very good. Enak banget katanya, Pak. So good. Everyone should come here. Yes, everyone should come here. Yes, definitely. Yes. And the and the the hot sauce is so good, right? <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Papi Kram, for the opportunity. We wanted to really promote. We like street food, and we wanted to promote Indonesia. Yes, definitely. Small enterprises. Thank, Thank you for you. everything you do. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to see you, Indonesia. Today really is a very good, good day. Yes, it's, it's a very good day. And I it, hope, thanks to Papi Kram in Indonesia. Indonesia continues to celebrate. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a great achievement. Yeah.